Tana Mojo and Brooke Schofield are speaking out after some crazy rumors were going around about Tana as they're on tour and her ex-boyfriend Chris Miles showed up. There's a whole drama going on. There's also some other stuff we're going to talk about. We're going to be talking about the fact that Cody Ko has returned to social media, kind of seeming like he's getting a feel for what people's reactions might be if he were to post more. As he started posting on Instagram stories, we're going to get into all that is going on there. And then speaking of coming back to social media, Jeffree Star returned turning to YouTube. He posted the first YouTube video in a long time on his channel. So we'll get into Jeffrey, his YouTube video, and all the other things that he's got going on that are kind of shocking. I mean, I can't believe that Jeffrey is still kicking around and has multiple stores where he's selling meat and makeup. I mean, it's just crazy, but let's get into everything. Kicking things off with Jeffrey, he's back on YouTube, like I said, posting a new video recently after taking about 10 months off from posting on the platform, as he's been busy going on TikTok Live, running his makeup and neat store, which he actually just opened a new location. This time it's in California. And I honestly can't believe that this is a thing that he is doing, but he's also doing some more unexpected things. Like he's re-releasing old music of his, which was one of the points of making this whole video was to promote the fact that he is going to be doing music again. But he spent most of this video talking about his entire career and how he kind of lost his passion for making YouTube videos and how things have changed in the beauty space. But he claimed that he was back. Now, the beauty community on this app definitely disintegrated and I lost my passion for beauty. I stopped reviewing makeup for a while. I kind of just felt out of place and I did go to other apps. I went to TikTok. I really have just been having the best time over there reviewing makeup. And human beings started to digest content different. All of a sudden, even though a lot of my hardcore watchers love a nice long foundation video, 30 minute review, the viewers were falling for all of the beauty creators, not just me. People were going to TikTok. They were really focusing on Instagram and YouTube for beauty had just shifted and I lost my spot. So now, baby, we are fully back in business. So YouTube, saddle up. There's gonna be a lot more long form content coming and we've been filming uh, a lot over the years. So saddle up, get ready, and Jeffree Star is officially back. I feel like Jeffree has had a couple of I'm coming back moments ever since his cancellation with Shane. I feel like after that, things were just never the same for him and people also didn't react the same way to Jeffree. And he was just kind of turned off by all of social media and really stuck with TikTok because he did find that people liked him better on there, but he claims he's coming back now this time. I don't know if he's actually serious about it. I guess we'll just have to see, but that is what's going on with Jeffrey. As for someone else trying to make their way back online, Cody Ko does seem to be trying to get a feel for how people would react to him coming back to the internet. Earlier this year, Tana Mojo had come out to confirm that she was in fact 17 years old when she had been with Cody, making him 25 at the time. Tons of news outlets ended up reporting on the story, and as more people became aware of it, he stepped away from the internet. It was later announced that he would no longer be part of the TMG podcast he did with Noelle Miller, but he was still going to be a part of their podcast network that they own together, TMG Studios. They said that he was just going to be taking a back seat and wouldn't be in the day-to-day -day operations anymore. Some wondered what this meant for other opportunities that he had, like his DJ residency at The Win. Back in January, it was announced that Cody was going to have this residency at The Win. They shared the news in a collaborative post on Instagram, writing at Cody Co joins the lineup for his 2020 for win nightlife residency. Catch him all year at Encore Beach Club and Excess Las Vegas. In July, he still performed his DJ set despite all that was being said about him, and it seems his residency is still in place as he posted to his Instagram story this week promoting his upcoming performance. This was the first time that he was posting to his Cody Go Instagram in a long while, and though some thought maybe he was obligated to post this, like it was in his contract that he had to promote the show on Instagram, others were also thinking that maybe this is just him trying to get a feel for returning back to social media and him posting on his story was kind of like a slow return because it had also been pointed out that Cody had recently tried to post on his running Instagram account. He has this other account. It's called It's Cody Trains. And he recently posted a Instagram story onto there. It was his running stats of the day. He didn't put any text along with it. It was just the screenshot. And this was truly the first thing that he posted since everything has come out about him. And then the other day he posted about his upcoming show. 
So maybe he wasn't even obligated to post that, but this was all just part of him trying to slowly see the reactions if he were to start posting things. But talking about Cody Ko, this does lead me to talking about Tana because, you know, there's a lot going on with Tana right now, but in the recent podcast episode, she talked about the fact that Gabby Hanna had recently come onto YouTube, posted a video where she was apologizing to those that she had wronged, which in the video, she didn't name any names when she was apologizing to people, but people did feel like one of the people that she was possibly apologizing to was Tana because Gabby talked about gossiping and sharing other people's stories when it wasn't her place to and wanted to apologize for doing so. Gossip, I want to say sorry to anybody who, whether I've spoken out of turn, behind your back, shared information that wasn't mine to share, I'm sorry. Again, I got my lick back and this was a big, big lesson for me in general um, about, yeah, speaking about somebody when they're not in the room in, in a negative way or in a way that uh, is overstepping personal boundaries. So that's a big one for me. I feel like I owe that apology to a lot of people from literally my whole life. Uh, and especially in my entertainment career. And recently with this Cody Co story going around, it was brought up that Tana at one point had called Gabby out for trying to sell a story about her and Cody Co to the press as Gabby had witnessed the two of them together and had warned Cody of Tana's age, but he still went ahead with it. And apparently Gabby was trying to get this story out there and Tana had vented about it before. This YouTuber, um, I don't know if I was 17 or 18. I was like on the brink, but I was at a playlist live and they were like trying to hook up with me. And I like, I just, it's something I never even like thought of again. You know what I mean? It was just, yeah. and obviously it was like an older guy and whatever, but I mean, we're friends now. And like, I, obviously I'm not saying I should, it's right. It's not yeah. right. It's entire, but I don't know if I was 17 or 18 and I don't, I don't know if anything so bad ever happened to where it's like condemning them. It was more just like a, a flirty weird encounter right. or whatever. And yeah. a couple weeks ago, I got a call from that should I say it? I was that Gabby Hanna was trying to sell to them that this YouTuber like hooked up with me when I was like underage and that it was when I was like, what if this was my trauma? So the whole selling the story to the press part, that's what people felt that she was apologizing for since she did make mentions of gossiping and sharing other people's stories when it wasn't her place to. And in the recent canceled podcast episode, Tana talked about hearing this apology from Gabby and she had some things to say about it. They said it like she wasn't a pleasure to be on set. She kind of apologized to everyone for that. She apologized for kind of talking about people's stories without permission. Essentially, that's where like people think it's about me because yeah. she kind of... I don't know, whatever. She apologized for a bunch of stuff and she seemed really like peaceful, grown and together in the video. Tana even went on to say that she would have Gabby on the podcast, which honestly, if that happened, it would be so crazy. Like Gabby on Tana's podcast after all this time and the fact that they did kind of have some beef when they filmed Escape the Night. I remember that being a whole drama as well that the two of them did not get along. So to see them on one couch talking things out, especially in this new era of Gabby Hanna where she's trying not to be problematic, it would be very interesting. But something else that's crazy is that Tana found herself in some rumor drama this week as people online accused her of cheating on her boyfriend, Makoa, because she had her ex-boyfriend, Chris Miles, come to one of their shows because her and Brooke are currently on tour right now. Mm. She posted on Instagram saying, this show is about to be hectic at Chris Miles. And she had been open about the fact that her boyfriend, Makoa, was currently on vacation. He wasn't on tour with her right now. So people were seeing this and they were like, so your current boyfriend is not with you, but your ex-boyfriend, Chris Miles, who they had this toxic on and off relationship. People were just like, Tana, what are you doing? The internet went wild. They were accusing her of cheating on Makoa. She posted a TikTok with Chris Miles. She ended up having to delete it because the comments were crazy going off on her. Someone posted a TikTok talking about the situation saying fans are losing it over Tana Mojo going on night out with ex Chris Miles. And Brooke commented on this and said, quite literally, just not true. In the days that followed her and Brooke posted a Patreon episode where Tana was not happy with what the internet rumored about her denying cheating and just thinking everything was ridiculous. She also ended up sharing this screenshot of her text with her boyfriend Makoa on her Instagram story, which really did put an end to the rumors about them as it seemed they were together. Everything was all good. She said, y'all Makoa brought Peppa to Bali and won't stop sending me pics of her there. Yesterday, she went dream catcher shopping. But then you guys, drama kicked off again for her and Brooke after posting a TikTok where they joked 
joked about their show in Baltimore not selling out. Some were not taking this in the way that Tana maybe intended, as her and Brooke were just talking about the fact that they were about to do a show to practically nobody. Okay, y'all, Brooke and I have been very lucky to have mainly sold out or close to sold out shows on this run of tour, okay? But I am under the impression now that we may not have as strong of a fan base in Baltimore, Maryland <laughs> as we thought. Why is it so dehumanizing? <laughs> like there is a chance that we may be doing a canceled podcast show to 27 people <laughs> in Baltimore, Maryland tomorrow. Please, Baltimore. Can you just buy a ticket if you've got it? <laughs> Wait, like, why is nobody, it almost, like, why am I so full of myself? I'm like, must be a glitch. <laughs> like, 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 it's that bad. It's just, we were just on stage in Richmond, Virginia, two thousands of you, and Baltimore is a couple hour drive away. So I just kind of assumed, our tour manager came to us today and he was like, y'all need to promote this show. <laughs> like, like, and don't get me wrong, like, if it ends up being four and a half people, I'll just tell you my deepest, darkest secrets and it'll be a great night. But it might be our first and last time in Baltimore tomorrow night. Good morning, Baltimore. <laughs> she'll, even, you need. she'll even do that on stage. I already see the headlines now. Is this like a bad idea to post? You're like, Tana Mojo and Brooke Schofield on TikTok Can begging. Cannot sell a begging. Show. <laughs> I saw someone saying, like, trying to promote struggling to war. I was like, damn. It's been sold out. It's been entirely sold out. But Baltimore, nice. not so much. People were taking this as them laughing about their scandals and people not liking them and we're just feeling like it wasn't a good look. Close to sold out shows on this run of tour. But I am under the impression now that we may not have as strong of a fan base in Baltimore, Maryland <laughs> as we thought. Ooh, I don't. I don't think you want to post that if you think about it just a little more. Tana kept it about the ticket sales, later writing in the comments responding to people saying that they fell off and are irrelevant now and couldn't sell tickets, saying, I'm here for the fell off comments. Don't get it twisted. We just did two sold out shows in New York City. We just may have never fallen on in Baltimore, I fear. So just a lot going on here, as you guys can see, lots of drama in the canceled bubble, but let me know your thoughts on not just this Tana stuff but jeffrey cody trying to come back let me know what you're thinking in the comments i love you guys so much and i will talk to you in the next video bye guys